Jeffrey Stacey is a U.S. national security consultant, a former State Department official in the Obama administration and also author of the book Integrating Europe. And he joins me now live from Washington, D.C. Welcome to the program. I want to start by asking Hello. you about uh, Joe Biden's message uh, this Friday. What are you expecting that he will say when he addresses NATO? I think you're going to see a renewed alliance, a renewed commitment to Article 5. An attack against one is an attack against all. And basically reassurance in the place of four years of the exact opposite from the previous president. And so this is going to be welcome uh, to the Secretary General, to allies, and really to our European partners that um, we have a new day, a new era, and this is going to first be felt with a, an important change in Afghanistan, but obviously Russia and China and both of them are effectively now going to have to deal with a reunited alliance, and that's not good for their interests after they've done so much separately and together to harm Western interests in the last few years. And Jeffrey, how different will Joe Biden's approach be to his predecessors? Well, almost the abject opposite. I mean, you had essentially a previous President Trump who was, whether intentionally or unintentionally, helping Russia's interests by undermining unity in the alliance, undermining transatlantic unity in general, and effectively sapping confidence I mean, among average American people, average people around Turkey, Canada, all our allies, both in the government and outside, really were damaged by the approach of President Trump. President Biden, on the other hand, with Lloyd Austin, with Tony Blinken, with Jake Sullivan, et cetera, have been right-footing U.S. policy in all directions, starting with NATO this week and also with Afghanistan related to that. You use the word damage. How much did Donald Trump damage NATO? Tremendously. The real concern was that, in fact, you could have a move by Russia, say, in Montenegro or somewhere like that, and Article 5 would get invoked and the U.S. would not come. And other allies' reliance on this partner more than any other, as we see with regard to troop levels in Afghanistan, that would have crippled the alliance permanently. So that prospect now is in the past. And that reassurance is precisely what allies in Istanbul, in Brussels, and everywhere needed to hear. And we'll those allies that you've just mentioned uh, see the U.S. now as a reliable partner? Well, they are, first of all, breathing a sigh of relief. Going to deeds as well as words. And they're getting the words and soon the deeds. But the deeds have already begun with regard to the cancellation of the removal of troops from Germany, for example. That's a big one. Another one that's coming is that NATO and allies are asking the U.S. to keep troops solid in Afghanistan. That's also underway. That commitment has not been made. There's been an internal decision to do so. But you have an, a little irony here that allies are leading the U.S. instead of the U.S. leading allies, which shows you that a few more deeds are necessary and those will be coming henceforth.